to downgraded quakes, we might need a minor watch before our next big one with the energetic flux afoot and the umbral field teasing us with a glimpse of a tiny but centralized coronal hole. Good morning, folks. Energetic flux, factor number one, the source being an M6.5 solar flare that unleashed a large coronal mass ejection based on the flare position spotting eject on satellites in the two predictive endless spirals. We expected the impact some point last night and we sure got it. Right there at the end of the day, UTC, you see the solar wind speed in yellow jump up about 100 kilometers per second faster than it was just moments before. Orange density jumps too. Down at the bottom, the green is the temperature of the solar wind and from low to high point at impact was around 10,000 Kelvin to approaching 1 million. The energy was integrated into the system. The auroral reports coming in from overnight are darn impressive. But the top aspect of this exercise is what has been repeatedly dubbed as the primary quake maker. Small? Yes. This opening might be tiny, but the magnetic forces had it well-defined and nearly centered disk, with a huge opening in the umbral field preventing any occlusion of the force. That's two factors simultaneously present, enriching the minor watch called yesterday. It was brief, quick, and we've quieted right back down. Also of note, it appears dueling volcanoes in Mexico are going to see which one gets to keep the princess, and a 4.4 is well above your average tremor in Hawaii. Only weather of note here is the precipitation headed for northern New Zealand. Might have to wait a bit, but it is coming. Europe, conditions are more dangerous than they were yesterday. First, in the Gulf of Bothnia and the northern Baltic Sea, we have some rough conditions. Significant avalanche threat in Norway with some cold and coastal turbulence in the UK, Ireland, and down to Spain. The clouds popping here are what is dubbed as winter storm Xerxes. Powerful convergence, breaking heat records on the leading edge of the low and freezing in back. Here's why. The large low pressure systems pull inward, counterclockwise, and slam air together of different moisture, temperature, and electric potential. As you look at the wind map, it should make sense why it's so hot out east and cold on the western backside. Quickly back to space weather. The Earth footprint just crested away from us on the north. We have two spots departing up there as well. They produced our M flares. They've been decaying a bit, but might decide to say goodbye. Active region center disk is in major decay. No big flares seen from this one. And the new guys down south appear to have magnetic complexity and a bit of growth from last night. I'd watch these, if anything. Of course, the magnetic potential is tempered by those M flares being a highlight of the sun for months. KP index holding at 3 now, but I do expect 4 or maybe even higher into storm conditions as Earth passes through the rest of the wake of this CME. Certainly not done yet. As you look at the planets upcoming, we have five days with no geocentric planetary positions, following by a string of them. We've got umbral fields blocking for a while, it appears, but look at the red opening about to arrive in four or five days. Folks, as I leave you with shots of our star, know that all those other things like tides, temperature, magna movement, wind direction, air pressure, etc., all play a role in triggering large quakes, and despite our luck in the stats this year so far, you will eventually see large quakes without any factors just is what it is. Given the next five days and what follows them, however, the factors suggest a downtick in quaking until the end of the coming week. Don't worry, we got storms and auroras to keep us busy tonight. Eyes open. No fear, it's 5.55 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.